Hello again folks, uh, I've been talking about doing this review for a while. Uh, this is one of my most recent meters. Um, it's brand new. Uh, it's not second hand or it's not from the 80s or anything like that there. It is a up to date, proper, fully fledged Geiger counter. Um, it comes all the way from Canada from a company called Environmental Instruments. And they make a range of meters, which I'll put up on the screen now, um, all based around first responders, um, but also marketed at for home use as well. Um, this is the CT007F, and it is an alpha, beta, and gamma ready meter. And uh, just for you, those of you at home that like this sort of thing, there you go. I know some people like that. Uh, but very, very small form factor, as you can see. Very, very thin. We have a plastic scintillator up here, as well as a silic silicone photomultiplier, uh, which gives you the alpha, beta, and gamma. Uh, we have single button for on, off, and scrolling through menus. Uh, we have an OLED screen, a very, very nice OLED screen, and then we have a little speaker there. Um, so what I'll do quickly is I'll take the back off and let you just have a look, sort of battery-wise. Uh, I've had this now for, I think, just the guts of two months, um, and very, very impressed with it. Uh, it's very, very easy to use. As you can see there, it runs off two AAA batteries. A lot of meters now seem to be going, if they don't go with rechargeable batteries, they go with AAA batteries. So another meter with AAA batteries. Um, yeah, as I said, I've been using it on and off um, in the period that I've owned it. Um, sort of comparing it with the Radia code and the Radia scan. And in fact, size-wise, I think anybody who owns a Radio scan will then be able to see. Now, obviously, it's going to have a lot smaller detection window, but I have found this to be a very sensitive device. And I'll compare it as well with the obviously the radio code just as well, so people can see. So, obviously. Form factor wise, it's uh, it's smaller than the radio code, and then with the Rotem Ram Genie, which is obviously another meter which can detect alpha, you can see that it is um, it's pretty small. Okay, so to turn the unit on, it's this single button press. Hold it for a couple of seconds, and the unit turns on, and you can see that's seventy four percent battery. I was using this unit for. I would say about a week um, and I drained the batteries. Uh, that's a brand new set and it's been on for about a day or so. Around 130 hours of use, continuous use with a single set of batteries. Now there is a companion app um, called Gamma Guard and it's iOS and Android. And if you connect to the phone and just use the phone battery, the OLED screen goes off. So most of the power is being used by the OLED uh, and you'll get about 300 hours of continuous use with this unit on connected to a phone. Um, the app is really, really nice and I'll show it to you in a few minutes, but I just want to cycle through some of the displays. So you can see at the moment we're on microsaver. Now that's fully user adjustable. You can change it to Ronkin or whatever you want in there. Um, single press of the button changes this into counts per minute. Uh, Another press gives us um, microsievert and count. And then another press brings it back. Now, there's a couple of user options in there. You can show the firmware and battery life and things like that there as well. I have that turned off just because you don't really need that in the display. So I've got a couple of sources here. So I've got a uh, small source, big source, and then I've got the crazy source out of the DP2. Uh, we're going to absolutely max this. Now, this will go up to, up to 10 millisievert, uh, but I've heard rumours that it will go up to sort of 25 millisievert. Um, so we'll see if we can max it out over 25, because if anything's going to do it, the DP2 source is going to do it. So let's try some 
Uh, well, let's try this little uranium marble first of all. So, I've got this little uranium marble, so let's try that. So, as you can see there, that is going up. Let's put it into counts per minute. Okay, so it'll detect something as small as that, which is good. I'll try the Rotem Ram Genie with that. Obviously, I've got the window open. Obviously, that's in counts per second mode, that's in counts per minute, but still detecting it. So, it's nice and sensitive from that standpoint, so it will detect low energy background and low energy you know sources of radiation so if you want to do a little bit, bit of prospecting or go around your local antique shops sunday flea markets things like that there this is going to work let's try some low energy strontium 90 then or well lowish strontium 90 heck of a lot lower than the the dp2 source so there's a little ingot so we'll try that see what we get That's the alarm going off. I'm up to 130, between 121 and 130,000 there. Let's switch back to my receiver. Okay, with alpha, beta, and gamma combined, we're at basically one millisievert or 1.1 millisievert so very sensitive little window there let's close the gamma shield and see if anything gets through yep a little bit is getting through okay Right, let's try the plutonium source. Um, I'll put a glove on for this. Just because it's plutonium. <laughs> Very low level plutonium, but plutonium all the same. Um, I'm trying to remember which one is the highest. I think it's that one. So let's open that again. Um, in fact, I'll put on two gloves because I'm reasonably ambidextrous, but I just want to do a favour in my left hand. Okay, let's try it the other way. All right, let's try this one. Straight away. Okay. So, yeah, nice little range there of sort of, you know, small to middle of the road. Um, we'll finish off with the uh, the DP2 source, which I'll put the glass screen in the way before I do that. Um, obviously, in the glass, let me see if you can see that. You can hopefully see there that there is um, very, very little coming off that in the glass, which is pretty nuts when you consider how high the source that is, how strong that is. So, right, we'll connect to the phone app here to let you see it. Now, the Gamma Guard app, as I said, is iOS and Android compatible. Um, I'm using my iPhone to, um, to actually record the video. So, um, I just put, I can put up a couple of screenshots, but the app is very, very similar on the iOS and Android. So, right, uh, we have an external detector. So you can see up here, that's the, you can see F84. It does it, checking for updates, detecting, and you can see the display has turned itself off. So 
and put that to one side because it's now not detecting anymore. So you can see there that it gives you uh, a dose rate and it's got this little half moon shape so that it is going into, uh, obviously goes green, orange into red or green, yellow, orange, red. Um, I can go into a detailed one now. This one's quite interesting in that it'll obviously give you your count rate, your dose rate, your total dose, accumulated dose, how long the unit's been on for. Uh, you can run a timed uh, scan dose if you want to uh, and so on and so forth. Good one. Interpret is nice. So at the current dose rate, um, it's 1,260 hours or whatever. It keeps changing depending on how the dose rate goes. Uh, that before you are accumulating a dose which is considered unsafe. Uh, so that's quite nice that it has that. Um, obviously, I'll test some of these different um, uh, sources and we'll see what this changes to. And then we have a graph and the graph will show you that that's obviously when it was detecting the, the quite high ranges and then dropping down into what it is now. And then we have a map here and I'll put a screenshot up. In fact, I'll put a video up. I uh, took a screen grab video of um, a walk I did around my local park. And you can hopefully see all the little sort of the pins there with a the little radiation symbol on them. And uh, what they are is essentially every couple of seconds, it takes a reading. And then uh, if you stay in a, a certain place for a, a longer period of time, it'll give you the radiation reading with a number. And that is because there is, you know, that many different readings um, in that log. So quite nice, very, very similar to the way the radio code works with it. It has the little map um, and I quite like that. So I'll go back into interpret. And if I can balance that there, I'll get the this strontium 90 out here, the low energy sort of one. And if I put that there, <laughs> so apparently can, looking at this we can be here for half an hour half an hour before we have gone over our uh, dose rate so uh as yeah that's that's <laughs> reasonably worrying when you uh when you consider that it's just that so i'll move that out of the way and that will slowly start start to drop down again now, you can change all the settings in here as well. Um, there's the settings menu. And I'll put in the password here, which is one, two, three, four. And there is all the settings you can change. Now, sound, uh, I have that off because I don't want the phone sort of clicking. And I can notice that that's quiet as well. Everything goes quiet when you, uh, when you have all these turned off. But you can turn the settings on this back on via this. So if you want the screen back on, you can turn it back on. If you want this to be still be making clicks, you can turn that back on. Um, I have it set up that it wasn't clicking, it wasn't making any noises when it's not connected to the app, but you can turn all those on, no problem. So if I turn on those now, probably hit the, the alarm off again. Yeah, that's better. So what I'll do is I'll turn the alarm off. So. That's the phone beeping. So that's me holding it over here and that's the phone actually beeping. So yeah, it's uh, it does work well. It's a very, very nice little device. Uh, I've been very, very pleasantly surprised with it. So yeah, as I said, I got this from Canada. Um, postage was $30. I paid in US dollars. I didn't pay in Canadian dollars. And all in, it was roughly 300 pounds sterling I paid and I was able to pay that with eBay paying three which is really good as well so it split the payments into three payments of 100 pounds which was really handy uh, made it a little bit more affordable um, at the time of making this video these are out of stock but uh, they do plan to have more in very very soon um, I showed you at the start of the video the other mechs and models they make. Uh, they are geared towards sort of the professional monitoring, you know, sort of like civil defense and things like that there. But they do make units such as this for home use. Um, I've been really, really happy with this. Um, it's a great little unit um, and, you know, it's, it's very easy to use. I mean, there's very little, you know, you can go wrong with with a one button press. Um, and yeah, it's it's one of those meters that 
I think if I didn't have anything else, I would probably go for it. You know, if I didn't have the Rotem Ram Genie, um, you know, this would be my meter that would, you know, 100% replace this. Uh, I think for sort of for proper scientific work, that's the sort of unit you want. But again, this pretty much does what the Rotem Ram Genie does. It definitely does what this does. Um, yes, this is a great unit, but I think for uh, just for build quality, um, this one sort of wins and it's just, I don't know. I just, there's something about this meter which I really like. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's just really small, <laughs> you know. A little case for this would be nice. Uh, I think if it came now, obviously, yes, it comes in this sort of waterproof pally case, but a little belt clip, you know, something with a belt loop on it or a hanger or something like that there. Very similar to um, what the Rally Code has, the Rally Scan has, uh, would be really good. But yeah, all in all, it's still a really, really nice little meter. Um, okay, let's do the sort of the death test on it now. Let's get the glass screen up and let's see what happens when I use the, uh, the DP2 source. So yeah, quick jump cut, I'll get the glass screen up. Okay, I have the glass up. There's the DP2 source. Um, I'm going to put that, let me see if I can get that somewhere where um, I'll probably just hold it with one hand. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so let's try it with the gamma shield on first of all, see what happens. Okay, and that's about, I'd say an inch away. And that's with the gamma shield on. Let's interpret that data. So it's safe for two minutes for the routine, routine dose limit of 500 microsievert. And you can stay there for 105 hours before exceeding the emergency dose limit of 250,000 microsievert. So I have reached 5% of the routine dose limit and 0% of the emergency dose limit. And you can see that percentage is going up. Oh, no point one. Sorry, that's ten minutes, not one hour, or not one minute. Okay, right. Let's try it. Let that run down to um, as close to zero as I can get again. So yeah, the DPT source is it's pretty strong. Um, now this meter, uh, I know, does ten millisievert. It's max but it has an overflow to about 20 millisievert. Now that's not going to be 100% correct, obviously, but I want to see if I can, if I can, you know, just how high I can get it really. So we've got the shield open. There's 11. There's 17, 26. Okay, we went up to 27 millisievert there, I'm pretty sure. I didn't want to just completely overflow the unit and freeze it. Okay, let's get it again. Okay, so there's about an inch. So that's an inch away. Okay, we brought that emergency dose limit down to nine hours, I saw there. And we've already used 45% of the routine dose limit. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a really, really strong source of radiation. I've tried it with, you know, the, the DP5 and things like that there as well. And it just really does not like it at all. Uh, so, yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's one of those insane um, bits of radiation that when you sort of have it like this, it's incredibly dangerous. But as, as soon as you do that and do that, um, th there's pretty much nothing coming from that glass jar now. It's, it's incredible how, how, how radiation works. Right, I'll take away this glass shield and I will give my final thoughts. Okay, uh, I think for a meter of this size and this quality and offering the features that it does, I think having a, com a companion app that's Android and iOS compatible, um, makes this a very, very, very affordable and usable device. Uh, I think having alpha, beta and gamma 
uh, in a device this small and this thin, uh, which just on its own is so, so handy. Coupled with the app, this makes this an all round package that I think if I didn't have any other meters, this would be the one I would go for straight away. Uh, I think in terms of what you're looking for in a device, I think things like the Radia code offers different features to this. I think having the sort of the gamma spectrum is very, very handy. Um, you know, being able to identify certain isotopes, very, very handy. Uh, I think these two as a package could go very well together. People who are looking, you know, you know to have multiple meters. Uh, these could definitely work together as a package. Anybody who wants one can just go to www.gammawatch.com and you'll see the sort of the full suite of meters that they make. And as I said a couple of times before, they do make them for the professional market and for the amateur market. So there'll definitely be something there you would look for. Now I paid full price for this. I didn't get any discounts or anything like that there. Um, with all my reviews, I'm completely impartial. Um, I don't ask for discounts. Uh, I always pay full price because at the end of the day, you guys have to pull f pay full price. So why shouldn't I pay full price as well? Uh, yeah, really nice little meter. I hope you all enjoyed this review and uh, hopefully it's made up some of your minds if you were looking at them online and thought about getting one. But listen, folks, as always, thank you very, very much for watching this very, very long review. And uh, I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.